everybody and welcome back to the podcast it's a film thing i'm your host rebecca gillen and today we're going to be discussing kind of ue film student life and what it's like understanding film from different perspectives so me as a graduate and also host of the film podcast all right so again i'm rebecca gillen we're going to go down the line and they're going to introduce themselves this time around hi everyone i'm jacinta de Vloot. i'm a year one film student Hi everyone, my name is Hallie Lewis. I'm a level two student here at the UE film mm. program. You got I got my own microphone, you did it again. <laughs> yeah, she's I'm laved up. <laughs> laved up. And then the level threes, the year threes are behind the camera, so that's why they're not involved right now. Well, on camera. All right, so we're gonna start with the first question. All right, so how did you view film, we'll say like either as a teenager or before UE to now coming to school and actually learning film degree format? So, um, as a teenager is when I started to get like a bit more um, obsessed with a film and in, in terms of like the craft that went into it. So I used to spend like hours on the um, website TV Tropes, which is like a, a wiki for um, media tropes and, and breakdowns and stuff. So I had a love of like, that was like baby's first like introduction to like film analysis and like meta commentaries and stuff. Baby's first. But <laughs> um, the difference between then to now is that there's a lot more um, depth, I would say, in terms of like how I, um, how much I'm learning about how much time and effort and energy is expended in the craft of film production itself. Yeah, that's that was really good. Um, I, <laughs> for me, I had uh, from a very young age. I was into film, like you know, like Walt Disney and animation was my bread and butter and stuff like that. And I just loved film. But then, as you were saying, as a teenager, um, I used to watch a lot of like Studio Binder and stuff like that. Um, their videos on all kind of thing, like you know, Aristotle's Poetics and stuff like that. Because I was just fascinated by um, the craft. Same. Um, and <coughs> now I still watch a lot of Studio Binder. Um, and my parents, like, they're just like, you're obsessed. Um, because <laughs> I just. No, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. The difference, I would say, is just the level, uh, knowledge level. It's just um, like we've really been given um, opportunities to learn, you know, so many, you know, film movements, um, much more technical information, hands on. Um, experience so yeah I'm grateful all right so for me I think it's a little bit different because um, for me film when I was younger was just entertainment I would just watch it to be entertained once the credits came on I <laughs> just left by I didn't really care about it and I had like zero expectations as well so I never used to watch trailers or anything because if you have no expectations you go in and you enjoy everything even the shitty films and so I used to watch a lot of sci-fi like arguably not great films but now because I understand the importance of every single rule i stay behind for credits now and also i can't actively watch those b films anymore because i'm going why did you do that like oh my gosh you could have done this instead no i still love a crap I movie mean, i love it no because i think there are some films where you just can like turn off your brain and just yes. look at pretty images and just like oh wow like escapism you know yeah, which is perfect yeah <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, red like did you watch blink twice I didn't. is it no. blink twice no 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 i didn't No. okay well when it came on, I'm trying not to give any spoilers, but when it came on, um, they just had a lot of red. Like red was an essential color throughout the film. And then they had most of the characters, like the woman, especially in white, and they dressed them in white often. Mm -hmm. And then the sound in that film, like they had these constant little noises in the background that if you didn't really study film or didn't appreciate film, you wouldn't realize it and realize how important this one sound that was playing from the beginning of the movie was to this one moment for the whole character's development. And I was going, so this is gonna this is gonna mean something but if i didn't go to ue i'll just be like what is that noise because i don't like noises yeah. i'll be like oh that's so annoying i want to leave the theater because it's just pew, pew, pew. i'm like oh i hate this sound but then i was going nah there's a purpose behind this like I'm, i was waiting for it then when it happened i went and so that's what my whole degree came down to figuring out a movie before it finishes no facts facts i mean <laughs> I think that in some aspects can honestly like ruin your experience a little bit because it's just like you're just looking at all the technical aspects like mm -hmm. you were saying of like 
what they did well and what they didn't do well. So I feel you. <laughs> you good? You have anything to say too? All right, I could talk about this forever, so I'm going to move on to the next question because I'm just going to keep going. Okay. All right, so let's see how do I phrase this. All right, there are different parts <laughs> to entertaining. In the <laughs> I can't read because I'm dyslexic, but basically there's different parts to entering the film industry. So do you regret choosing to attend school instead of, you know, just going out there, guerrilla style, and figuring things out? Okay, so, so far I don't regret um, attending because, one, I'm enjoying the experience a lot. And two, I literally have no experience um, with filmography, with um, videography, with anything apart from being a fan and like a consumer mm -hmm. like i did like fan editing and whatnot and saying i got into that like last year oh my God. but uh, have that's i that's seen not your fan like edit did you use tumblr yes oh my God. okay we'll talk about later we'll talk about later <laughs> but um so i got into fan editing but um i'm not say confident enough to be like well oh, i'll go out there and i'll shoot my own movie or anything mm -hmm. like that so no yeah absolutely not i am like one th I'm not saying that everybody who doesn't go to film school Reason are that. hacks, but I knew that I would be a hack if I um, didn't go to <laughs> film school. I, um, <laughs> like, there's just something for me about, like, a structured program mm -hmm. that's really good for my learning. So, um, like, you know, I would self-educate, like I said before, with videos and, like, reading and stuff like that. Um, so, like, my focus was honestly film studies, if I'm honest, before. And, like, I used to write fan fiction, too. Um, and was it AO3? Like, huh? Was it AO3? No, it was like, no, 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 um, Wattpad. Oh, yeah. The, yeah, I still got <laughs> Wattpad, man. I never deleted yeah. it. Don't oh, really? use it. Don't use nah, it, but never Wattpad deleted and it. Me. I found a writer on AO3 last year. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, that's nice. the new thing. It's hard to get... You have to register and they have to prove you. You can't yeah. just sign up. I didn't even know about AO3. But, like, yeah, so I used to write and, like, I wrote, like, my first film before coming to um, film school but never actually, like, made anything. Um, That's so cool. I did not write a film. I just, <laughs> I just thought of a film and then just see it in my brain because it was written already, but I put it on paper because it was there. Yeah, yeah. But I definitely don't regret it because... Um, I mean, first of all, I'm able. I made like so many friends coming here, and like everybody is just so friendly. It's a really great and like immersive experience. Um, and then also they encourage us all the time to you know practice and everything. So literally every Friday we just go like after class and try to shoot something. Um, That's and, like, awesome. We, yeah, we just choose a different director every single week and just do it. Like you know. I absolutely mm -hmm. love it and I'm yeah love to be here love it they used to tell us that all the time they're like you have all the equipment you have all this access just use it use and it. people in my class especially didn't and the years above me they didn't really utilize the space I mean you're paying for this off gates pay you should really use everything to your advantage so then like I think it was my friend Kirk David and I we would just come in around this time when we supposed to have clubs on a Thursday afternoon and then Shay would see us and then he would teach us like lighting techniques and we would just we didn't actively go out and film things because it was just the three of us and also it was also doing the capsule and they would take all the good equipment and then they would just hoard it and keep it yes. and we were like we're not going to be like them we're going to be better and different and then obviously COVID happened and we didn't get back the equipment for a year we had the URSA <laughs> and we had yeah. that we had that all during the pandemic and we just used it because we couldn't actively give it back to the university oh my god <laughs> I mean, for us, like, we're trying to invest now in our totally film closer. equipment um, because, uh, like, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'll get it back just yeah, now. Come on. But, yeah. Film equipment. Film equipment. Yeah, no, we're just trying right now to, like, mass our skills and just do as much as we mm -hmm. can right now while we're at film school, just like you said. Um, you know, going broke and whatnot, uh, buying this <laughs> set of equipment, but loving it all the no, same. No, listen, I still don't own a camera. Really? Yeah, I graduated. In, well, I took an extra semester, so I graduated in 2021. And um, it took a while for the rebate from UWE to come back because I spent all my money on Capstone. Oh, my goodness. We'll talk, I'll explain that process afterwards because you haven't reached Capstone yet. Yeah, but that's I very stressful. That. Um, so it took a while, and then obviously COVID was a thing. And so then you're a fresh, graduate, fresh new graduate out of um, UWE. Yeah. Film degree, 
and COVID was just a thing. No one really was investing in films and TV yeah. at that moment. But anyway, there's another section of this question I want to bring up before we go talking into that. Yes. All right. So do you think it's accessible to like the average person to enter the industry here via like UE, like the education system? Like how accessible is it, do you think? I mean, it's a bit harder for you because you're still in the learning environment versus me who's like out there now trying to find regular employment. Well, um, based on like secondhand information, <laughs> because um, I have an older brother who is a 3D animator, 3D generalist and a VFX oh, artist. Fancy. And uh, so from um, knowing about his like friends' experiences and stuff who are in the industry and stuff, a lot of the persons who are involved in the local film industry or who started here locally and they um, went abroad, they really got in through the university systems here. Mm -hmm. You know, whether they did animation at UCT or they do film here at UE. So I think um, it's possible to get into like short form content creation without like having the university experience. Mm -hmm. But in terms of like the networking and like yes, scholarship opportunities that. and that sort of thing, um, depending on the level that you want to attain, it would probably be, be easier to, mm -hmm. you know, come to UE and study film. Yeah, I feel like w when you come here and then you graduate, you kind of have a leg up a little bit in the industry because you already know people. Like Cedric Smart, that's the sound man of the Caribbean, basically. Everybody hides him for everything. Period. We know him. So yeah. he'll actively call. I mean, Kirk Garner, who went to you with me in my class, became like Cedric's little men like mentee, and he would take him on sets and stuff. If Kirk, I'm just using him as an example now. He's my friend. I could talk about him if I want to. Um, if he was now starting out teaching himself audio, it would have taken him a while to meet Cedric and to actually have those connections. Exactly. And then even the professors here, or the lecturers, sorry, like Lynn, when there's job opportunities, they call me. Nariba emails me something. Hey, someone's looking for this job or this role. So just it's the community that you like. You have access to. That's yeah. a bit easier. You don't feel alone going out. Going out like. Just imagine you graduate secondary school, maybe not even form six, but form five, and you go, I'm going to try and do film. And yeah. you just have you, your camera, you're alone. Yes, people succeed and they can do that and they can be very skilled and learn, but it's kind of scary. It's like anxious. Yeah, I, don't, yeah. I would not have. If I didn't come to UE, I, would, I, I was going to be a lawyer. I wasn't going to, I wasn't going to study film. No and I just studied it on a whim and great, loved the experience. My new job starts Monday. Very Period. excited. Yes. I won't talk about it yet in case I get fired. She's you know? a working woman. <laughs> <laughs> but no, like, I mean, exactly what you all said. It's, uh, it's key for networking, I would say, and um, building community. P they always preach to us here at the UE Film Program that um, film is a collaborative experience. You have to have people around you, you know, and um, there are always you know film events that you can go to mm -hmm. um to network and to you know and as you show up to all of these events and stuff like that people become familiar with your face and everything uh but it does give you a leg up being here because you just you know you have to interact with these people every single day mm -hmm. and um you know get to know them and you can get close to people and you know start collectives and all of this stuff you're just surrounded constantly by people who love the same thing as you yeah. and who want to you know work with you and you know collaborate on all the skills you have there's a lot to be said with surrounding yourself with like like-minded individuals yes, it's a very interesting environment like because you're all intellectual equals exactly which is yes, great sir. anything else anything you want to say i had another thought but i was listening to your thought and i got so consumed with hearing what you were saying i was like that my thought just went out the window but she's gone she'll never come back ADHD. <laughs> All right, so let's move on to the next question. Because again, I could have us talk about each question for 30 minutes. Because again, I love to talk and I love that we have the, this access to this environment where we can speak about these things and hear everybody's different perspectives. But I find it interesting that we kind of have very similar perspectives despite, you know, graduating year one. But I mean, no, I'm not going to bring age to it. I was going to say <laughs> with age comes wisdom and stuff too, but I won't say anything. <laughs> All right. So, oh, this is a good one. What's your expectations surrounding local cinema? Yes, it says expectations. Okay, so my expectations concerning local cinema. I don't know if I'm like interpreting the correct question correctly, so but... What I are you looking forward to? Like in the future? Yeah, it could be. Well, expectation is... Mm -hmm. Okay, so... Um, in the future, one thing I would really like to see in Trinidad and Tobago is um, local productions achieving 
mass appeal popularity here locally as well as regionally, internationally as well, to where we get to the place that we aren't mimicking experiences or productions that are um, like from America or from the UK or elsewhere mm -hmm. is totally authentic local uh, Caribbean experience. Mm. But at the same time that it has such universal appeal that people speak about it and obsess over it. And like there's an actual fan, fan culture developing around um, local works mm. to the point that it's like people love these things so much that they would talk about it or, or, or obsess about it to the same extent that they would like a, a, a major production or series mm -hmm. like that hits like San Diego Comic Con or something. Yeah, yeah. that would yeah. be so cool. That, that would be dream. cool because like for me personally, one of the things that um, kickstarted my motivation for coming back here is that um, this is actually, I applied to study um, film before, but I didn't get in. <laughs> so I ended up doing another degree, but I applied to come back here as well because I started to get into like fan editing and fan fiction. I got mm -hmm. really obsessed with a show last year. Wait, can you say the show? Are you comfortable? You don't have to if you don't want to. Eh. <laughs> okay, move the on. The show, the show is the bear. Ah, uh, yeah. I'm well, a okay. Sidkami shuffle. So um, I got really obsessed with it. And uh, in terms of the craft of the show, I enjoyed it so much as a viewer that it made me want to create myself, mm -hmm. made me want to be a creator. So I want to see the local industry get to the point where local productions make their audiences here locally want to be creators and get involved in the industry itself. Well, I want to segue. She said, um, like making Caribbean scented films. And it just hit yes. me. I was like, you haven't reached that part in the lecture yet where we talk about what is the Caribbean identity and what is yeah. what makes something a Caribbean film? Because it's so broad and wide. Yeah. But anyway, stay tuned for that. No, no, no. <laughs> I mean, that's what I want to get into. Like, uh, well, first, I guess I'll answer the question. <laughs> um, it's, so my expectations for the um, cinema stage, I would say um i don't know like the conventional things that we have right now are like you know music videos and advertisements and everything but Bumps i really shaking, you? <laughs> <laughs> but like i mean and uh down here i guess we have a limit in budgets and mm -hmm. stuff like that but i really think like we're learning about third cinema and you know how that movement they used um having a low budget and like low access to you know equipment as a as a leverage mm -hmm. to create their own sort of cinema and i really want to see you know um the local audience have a new sort of taste for that instead of sort of this perfection mm -hmm. um you know escapist sort of cinema that we see from you know hollywood and stuff like that which to m be honest with you it's it's just becoming very repetitive it's overdone. And, and overdone and each every single story you know there's maybe like five stories that are retold mm -hmm. over and over again in hollywood yeah, so like how many times has little woman been a movie thank you, like, you oh my gosh i mean, I mean each one's different like okay but i mean yeah and on. it's great but it's and it's three or four ad adaptations that they give these budgets for and you know it would be really nice to you know come into new stories with new diversity and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff so one thing that's really important to me to segue into uh you know caribbean taste like i actively try to i'm trying to like build caribbean aesthetics in my you know pinterest pages <laughs> and stuff like that um um because i would like us to have that aesthetics but then also maybe even our own you know story structure so you know hollywood has their three act structure bollywood has their five act structure mm -hmm. i want you know my hope for the uh, local industry is that, you know, the local audiences start to, you know, we tell our value. own type of story oh, yeah. Yeah. Know, coming from us and, you know, being proud of us. Like, I think, um, sorry, I'm talking plenty. No, go ahead. But um, what you're saying has value. <laughs> but I think because we've been, um, you know, Lynn is always talking to us, one of our lecturers talking to us about, um, us having a steady diet of like Hollywood films 
Um, we just, I don't know, we can't see anything outside of there. So I think that if we like hybrid all of those things, mm -hmm. we hybrid the beauty from that, um, from that industry <laughs> with our own tastes and with our own story structure, what we value, and that will come from what we value. Um, I think we, we have a bright future ahead of us and I'm like always inspired to be around like, you know, visionaries such as yourselves. Girl, please. <laughs> well, no, but like inspired to make this happen, you mm -hmm. know, it, we have it in us. So, Go team. Go team. The team is the Caribbean. Yes. Yay. <laughs> I kind of, oh, I've, man, same. <laughs> That's me answering, same. Like, yeah, I can't, I can't say anything else because you want that audience because especially Film is a business. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, even though we love to say film is art, we want to make, we want to be independent filmmakers and just make what we want. People need to invest in that and we ha they have to have a return you know, on their investment. Yeah. So what am I going with this point? <laughs> <laughs> the point's gone. No. They had a reason. I was talking about film being a business. But it's just, you need people to fund your film. So once there's a wider audience, that means the people that are funding the film have a guaranteed return on their investment. Yeah, exactly. So we need the audience to be interested. Mm -hmm. And it's also, when people watch our films, they have this view of Hollywood and American films mostly because our media, what we're exposed to is we're very Americanized. I yeah. mean, the way, I, the way, even the way I'm talking, some people don't even think I'm from here. of culture, yeah. Yeah, we're very Americanized. So when people watch our films, even, it doesn't even have to be from Trinidad and Tobago alone. It can be from other Caribbean islands. They don't like it because it doesn't look sharp or bright colors. And then you could tell an American film from a European film because those yeah. ones are a bit, you could feel the coldness in it or you could feel the warmth. Yeah. And then when an American film does something in the Caribbean take, they put that yellow orange filter over it and then yes. they always have the palm trees and stuff. And that's your representation there. So it's like, how do we now go about making a film? Because when we're making it, we always just choose the orange and the, yeah. the warmth because that's just what we're exposed to when we learn. And mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong with, I mean, I love oranges, that's my favorite color. So I always want to put an um, a orange gel. I'm like, slap orange on that light. It yes. must be orange because I just love <laughs> fire, the flames. Yeah. And it's a part of our culture is the heat and, mm -hmm. you know, the warmth of our people. I think that comes through from these filters yeah. and stuff. But um, I think it's it comes from our, you know, uh, I guess from what they say about mm -hmm. us that like you were saying the palm trees and etc yeah. etc and we have taken that on as that is what we this are is our as identity. the Caribbean and that's why I'm passionate also about again building you know Caribbean aesthetics and mm -hmm. stuff. I look forward to our future. Yes. Soon when we're like 60 we're going to be look back and go yes. we did that. It was all of us, all 200 and something of us. Yeah. I, I do, I'm just guessing, I'm throwing out numbers there. It could be way more. There could be a thousand, probably. Mm -hmm. All right, so since being in school, has your idea of identity in Caribbean spaces changed? We kind of just talked about that a little bit. How interesting. Yeah. I didn't even know, I forgot that was a question and we brought it into it. That was cool. Anything else to expand? Well, um, one of the things that um, I was watching the podcast, you know, the It's a Film Thing podcast, and one of the things that um, one of our lecturers, um, I mean, Etha Valen, said is that My there's friend. so many um, different experiences, you know, that the Caribbean consists of, that makes up the Caribbean. So mm -hmm. it's hard to delineate, to limit, um, filmmakers or creatives to say that like this one perspective is, a, is what the be all and end all of mm -hmm. being uh, the Caribbean. The <coughs> Caribbean is a vast region, you know, there's a lot of different um, cultural experiences within it. Yeah. So we're not monolithic. So whatever yeah, is your vision, is these words. whatever is your vision of um, the Caribbean, the Caribbean as you see it based mm -hmm. on your own life, you know, it's your lens. We each have yeah. our own. If you make a Caribbean film, I make a Caribbean film. Chances are it could be different or it could look the same. We don't know. Yeah. No, exactly. Because, I mean, I, I don't know what class I learned this in, but like it's definitely cultural identity. Yeah. Cultural identity is a myth. 
um, because so like for Trinidad, for example, that you know, it's controversial. Well, yeah, but like it's true, yo. For Americans, because, that's very controversial. Yeah, <laughs> I know because they have sort of they don't even have a monolithic, but I think that Hollywood sort of paints mm-hmm. that they have a monolithic yeah. identity, right? Um, another thing, you know, lack of <laughs> diversity. But anyways, um, Caribbean, <laughs> right? So um, Trinidad, I would say, has the identity from you know looking outwards Mm -hmm. carnival and um you know (laughs) our beaches and the palm trees and the dancing and and trini bad bacon shark doubles all this kind of Mm -hmm. stuff um but there are plenty people within this country who have never tried a doubles do not partake do not partake partake. um i love doubles yeah, who might you know have felt a like more. I have to say that. Yes, <laughs> we all love doubles. We do, all but I'm oh, just saying this. there are people who have never tried doubles, never mm-hmm. had pillow, um, <laughs> never you know put on a carnival costume, never done juve, anything no, like that. I've never Maybe. played carnival. Yeah, me neither. But you know, I've been around it mm. my whole life. But there are a lot of people who just you know might be more conservative than that. Yeah, and actually, like, is Kiddies Carnival doesn't. I'm not counting Kiddies Carnival in the carnival. I'm talking it. Pretty mass. Uh, but yeah, no, I'll just finish off by saying we just, every single story, as mm-hmm. you were saying, is legitimate. Um, it's told from a Caribbean person, no matter, you know, how they speak or, you know, how they dress or what question. they celebrate. If someone who wasn't born in the Caribbean but has, like, Caribbean roots, and so they're, uh, I'm going to say America, like from America, and then they make a film and they marked it as a Caribbean film, would you as a Caribbean person say that that is a Caribbean representation of a film. Because I would view it as a Caribbean diasporic film as a like immigrant from in America, but I wouldn't view it as a Caribbean film. Yeah. Like, what are your thoughts on that? Since we're talking about Caribbean thing. <laughs> plenty. You know what? Like, let we'll pitch that for, um, we can pitch that for the next podcast. Yes. Okay, so what I, I would probably have to agree with you that I would consider it like a Caribbean diasporic film. Because there's like one film in particular that I want to see that I haven't seen Mm -hmm. that um, was done by Horace Ove. And he was a local director, film director, who um, he was born here. He lived and grew up in Belmont and then immigrated to Mm -hmm. the UK Mm -hmm. and became one of their foremost um, black British directors. Mm -hmm. And he his directorial debut, feature film debut was Pressure. And that was a film about the experience of um, young uh, working class um, um, black British youth mm-hmm. of Caribbean descent. So I would consider pressure. I haven't, I haven't seen it, but from reading about it, mm-hmm. that's a Caribbean diaspora film because, you know, they're in the UK. It's set in the UK and everything. He is. Yeah. He was born and raised here, though. S- but... So yes, it's it's Caribbean, but it's it's not it's not limited to the Caribbean. Yeah. But then uh, per se, because you have to um, factor in that it's a British experience yeah. as well and mm-hmm. a British landscape that is being reflected, and the mm-hmm. all the, the tensions and the pressures that comes with that that is being reflected in in that piece of art. Yeah. So I think it would be like a Caribbean diaspora. That mm. wasn't a question on the list. I just thought of it. Mm-hmm. All right, let's move on before, uh, you know, I don't want to make this podcast run over time because I could talk a lot. All right, so let's see. Did you discover something new you thought you wouldn't have um, been interested in or did not consider previously? I guess since coming here. Did not consider. It's very broad. I'm guessing we're going based on like film, yeah. but it could be anything really because I mean the space and the environment, it kind of enlightens you to view at least the Caribbean in a different lens, I, especially if you didn't study Caribbean history for Cape or anything. Yeah. Uh, that's a hard question. Um, yeah, should I read it again? Yes, please. Do you want to read it? <laughs> oh, so, well, yeah. No, All right, so did you discover something new you thought you wouldn't have been interested in or did not consider previously? I wouldn't say there was anything that I didn't consider, but I guess we have to learn every aspect of film in... Mm-hmm. Um, Um, especially in level two, we get more deeply into it. So, you know, camera work and stuff like that. I had always said, you know, I want to be a writer or a director or, you know, um, something along those lines. But uh, being introduced to things like cinematography and, 
editing and stuff um i am definitely more passionate about like learning all of it mm -hmm. so that i have all of the skill sets um you know so that if i have to make you know films on my own or films with a small team i'm able to do so but i mean recently i've been getting really into um production design like want to do set design and costume design mm -hmm. and stuff like that and um a I think that comes from the fact that it's sort of a niche in the Caribbean. Like it's some, it's something that is, um, that there's a demand for. Um, you could so see it in the films that we watch when you, yes. especially when you go into people's bedrooms and stuff. It's just clear walls. They don't really think to dress the set enough because it exactly. feels, it feels bare. It does feel bare, and it also, you know, doesn't provide, you know, context to the story, mm -hmm. and that's something. It ruins immersion. It, it ruins immersion. Yeah. Not. Absolutely. Also, why sometimes they just say, "Oh, they're moving." Yeah, because that's just the easiest they reason. They say they're moving. Wait, oh, no, or they're moving in as or they're going to move. Or sometimes she doesn't know her identity, so they don't dress the set and stuff enough. That's so, interesting. I mean, the reason just because I've made a film in a, with a low budget, so you have to kind of figure out like how you could excuse certain things. But anyway, yeah. yes. Yeah. Would you? Um, would you like to say your thoughts? Should I reread the question? Because <laughs> it's a, it's kind of a. You could say a lot for this question, but you could also say nothing. Well, um, for me personally, something that I hadn't considered before, I would have to say that coming into the program, what I wanted to um, refine is that growing up, like people always told me, like I, I write very well. I'm a writer. And I did a screenplay writing course on Coursera um, in February, and I did well in it. That's nice. So that kind of motivated me to come here. So I would was considering before coming here that, you know, maybe I should be like a screenwriter or editor someday. But I think, you know, just from looking at the syllabus and seeing the courses that I'd be exposed to, I'd be very interested to see, you know, because I always like love music and sound and the way that influences cinema. I would be interested to see maybe if I could like get into sound design. So mm, definitely. I'll see. <laughs> if I wasn't so sensitive to sound and like different aspects of sound, when I hear noises, it kind of sets me off sometimes. I would definitely focus more on sound because Cedric makes it seem so interesting and it's so much fun because that's the backbone of the film. You, a film could look beautiful, but if it has bad sound, it's a bad film. Sorry. All right, do you want to move on to the next question? All right, so do you feel um, prepared to head into the film industry? Dude, <laughs> scary. Well, as of now, seeing as I'm just starting off, um, this is week eight, I believe, of the <laughs> semester. Like your, no. your film baby. Yeah. I'm just, um, I just, you know, dipped my toe into the, into the yeah. ocean. No, and that's exactly how I felt in level one. Um, I mean, we had like, you know, end of year um, films that we had to do, but that was sort of some of our first experiences doing that. Like we had practice sessions and stuff like that, but I didn't um, like, I think some people had preferred roles. So it's mm -hmm. like you would end up doing like one or two things, whereas now in level two, like we have to just start doing all of it, you know? So I feel definitely, I would say, more prepared to go into the film industry now that I'm, you know, getting a chance to learn all of it. But I think by year three, I'll be able to say yes. But for <laughs> now, for now, it's just kind of still allowing myself mm -hmm. to, like, grow and, um, yeah, improve skills. Yeah. Can I ask how many people are in your class, in your year group? Well, sorry, I'm from year no. one, because I know sometimes we lose people. Um, they, we are they losing don't, people. They don't um, stay in the degree. They're alive. Yeah, they are alive, but yeah, we are ha losing people, unfortunately. Maybe it's about 10 or 11 of us now. That's, that's yeah, large. It's, it's, it in is my large, year yeah. one, the first week, we had 15 people, but we maintained 10 up until year three. We got new people coming okay. in. Yeah, no, And I'm also the only girl, so yeah, For that's real? fun. Yes. Well, don't get stuck yeah. being the producer. That, listen, they we need to have a separate there. podcast to talk about that. But women in film. Yeah, women well, we in could film. Should I? I'm the host. Should we just just kidding? I was like <laughs> changing the theme of the podcast. No, just kidding. I won't do that. The director will give me evil eyes. Yeah, but I mean, quickly on that, it's just you know, I guess people perceive that women are better at organizing things and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So I do automatically have sort of the role of the producer, 
but I want to also have dip my toe into you know the creative aspects of it you know mm -hmm. not just it, it sort of feels like you get shoved off to the side a little bit no definitely so I would like to have a chance again uh, I just want to because I feel as though my experience would have been a bit different so in year one did y'all have to make your own films because I know the year below me had to make I did not touch a camera in year one I wasn't a, well not I wasn't allowed to but they had so many people that that was in the rule but like, how is your class structured now? Okay, so currently, um, for, the, eight weeks in though, for so. <laughs> the, the fundamentals of film production mm -hmm. course, currently, um, we have an assignment due um, in about two weeks' time. We have to make a two-minute short, mm -hmm. but we're shooting on shell phones because we haven't, like, had access to, like, cameras and stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, so you do a lot with the cell phone. Yeah. Okay. So, um, we're going to you know, have our first foray into making a short film. I'm very excited for you. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, um, we had the same thing. We had like pairs of two mm -hmm. um, and we had to make my first film. I um, I don't, it's not very good, but um, <laughs> it's <laughs> like, I'm no, glad. It's hard I'm to view your work as good because yeah. you're so involved in it, but yeah. I'm pretty sure it is. No, and I mean, as we learn technical skills, you just like kind of like objectively, like, you know, the score could have been better matched mm -hmm. or you know um certain things with like continuity editing and oh yeah even like you know it's in my opinion it's a pretty cheesy it's <laughs> it's something that in it's my heart but it's a bit cheesy but right, let me not i i still love it because it's my first one but yeah so in year one also mm -hmm. in semester two we had our five minute film which we all worked on it was two five minute films oh wow yeah so we were put into groups of like four or five mm -hmm. and i think we had four shots and that's oh, how yeah. it worked and i just kind of ended up being like an assistant really yeah. and then I acted when we had to edit all them together so I really didn't I think I think when they saw what they did with our class and how involved we were and how much we wanted to learn I feel as though after that that's how they started developing it and making it even better so I'm actually really glad oh, that you'll get this I'm experience sorry. to act like try different fields a little bit more but also yeah. I had really I had no motivation to try I was scared yeah I don't because everybody else in the class when I saw their one minute um we had to do a 30 second unedited just film something 30 seconds and when i saw everybody else's own i went oh my jesus yeah oh my gosh what am i doing they're amazing yeah. and then you know that really it scared me but and it's like it, that's that is a constant experience in in film like you know no matter what it's you know like film is like a deep part of yourself mm -hmm. it's your art it's your craft you know um you hold a lot of it linked to you know your value and your <laughs> self-esteem so um oh, yeah. i understand that it happens all the time. Okay, second to last question. <laughs> all right, so since we're talking about Caribbean, Caribbean identities, you have a favorite Caribbean film as of now? Okay, so unfortunately, um, one of the things I want to correct me in, in the film program is the mm -hmm. fact that I haven't been, like as a consumer of mass media, I haven't been like exposed to a lot of Caribbean film. So just off of like the last Caribbean films that I've watched, mm -hmm. you know, thanks to being in the program, I really enjoyed Rene Polonais. Um, I hope I'm pronouncing her name correctly. I really enjoyed her short films, um, Sweet Fries and A Very Quiet Desperation. And on uh, A Quiet Desperation rather, and on the documentary film mm -hmm. side of things, I enjoyed um, Electra Amis films. Um, in particular, I really enjoyed um, Floating in, your, in a River of Time. And uh, I, mean, I really good. enjoyed, um, I can't recall the name of the, um, the Describe film Describe what's in it and maybe we know. But yeah. it's, it's the documentary that... Um, is direct observational of like three elderly um cuban it's something that is go to his, go to his <laughs> go to his youtube page go to his instagram is um mm -hmm. amir Wait, ether Valen. it's amir zone yeah. when he was in cuba i think it's with the school it children. has leaves it has oh. leaves and oh, no, leaves. yeah no i only watched the school children one is it shades of oh it's shades <laughs> of i don't know <laughs> well, um, look in the description below because the year threes will find it for yes, us. Yes, we'll link it. Um, mine was 
floating in a river of time that one was so gorgeous and like i really i'm so inspired by amir's um style because of like what he focuses on he has a lot of like sensory mm-hmm. shots where he goes very like you know close um so you know like skin textures and you know like sweat on skin and and um like the movements of the river and all those things like i really you know it it brings the emotions out um and i also really loved doubles that one was great i liked his use of um music there was this particular scene where um he was in new york and in the background there was parangon and i was (laughs) like this is like you know so good in terms of you know like the culture shock you get when Mm -hmm. you go to the states you know um and i also really liked shades of indigo which was um about you know jamaican culture the like the issue with um bleaching of skin and this one little girl who um like saw an older i think her older sister do it and then did it herself um yeah i really liked the aesthetic specifically of that and how she used she or he i'm not sure mm-hmm. who the director is so used they. yeah they, they <laughs> use um <laughs> storytelling so mm-hmm. yeah i think that is really a great example of like a caribbean aesthetic that is not you know palm trees and so forth Mm -hmm. yeah i'm biased uh my little company with my friends david and kirk we made a documentary on the music festival indie valley so i'm going to say that's my favorite caribbean film the indie valley yeah documentary also that documentary we saw um what was it it was the the star with the what what is it called the star this Part of the iconography. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Um, the iconography docu series, guys. Um, check out Pomegranate Studios on IG and um, their YouTube page as well. Oh. They are doing a docu series that is covering. Right now, they're focusing on our local music icons, but mm-hmm. they <laughs> want to expand to different cultural icons and covering them. Oh their lives someday. I hope they choose my aunt Cecilia Salza, the fantastic actress of Chenland. So mm-hmm. go check her out. She's yes, great. yes, yes. <laughs> so um, so far they've done two episodes. They're working on the third one right now. They did Roy Cape, Doctor mm-hmm. Roy Cape. Um, may you rest in peace. And uh, the second episode was Mangal Patasa, which you know recently screened. Yeah. All right. That's all. Final question. Yes. Yes. I don't know. I'm, I'm like, should I read like this? In a Caribbean space, what ideas do you want to explore? <laughs> Sorry. Yes. I'm going to do it over. Cut. <laughs> <laughs> In a Caribbean space, what ideas do you want to explore? And there's a kind of a part two to this. Do you feel like you have to tackle serious topics to be valid as a Caribbean filmmaker? Ooh, honestly, yes. But no. Yeah, yes and no, honestly. I I mean, I've never thought of it that way. I just thought that there are a lot of serious issues mm-hmm. um, in the Caribbean that need to be dealt with that just aren't. So, but it doesn't necessarily mean you have to, like, um, as we're learning again from our lecturer, Lynn, that, you know, you can use comedy and satire and all of these things to talk about serious issues. And that is some of the ways that you know you can really get through to people on these things you know seriousness doesn't always work Mm -hmm. so there's that what was the first part of the question um in a caribbean space what ideas do you want to explore yes so a big thing that we talk about again in lynn's class is intimacy Mm -hmm. but not intimacy in that we see, you know, in carnival, you know, sexualized bodies. I just and mean like relationships with people. Relationships like with people, friendships. It's the chemistry. It doesn't translate yeah. too much in, in film. There you go, the chemistry. Um, but in terms of romantic relationships, for example, literally just like simple things like, you know, holding hands. Like you don't see that sort of thing. You don't see like, you know, kisses or, you know, mm-hmm. um, people showing genuine love. I think a lot of the time, like, Caribbean media just shows, you know, everybody, yeah, dysfunctional relationships. Dysfunctional relationships where people, you know, using each other for their bodies and it's stuff like um, that. What is I it? hate it. That kind of what sells. Did you watch, like, the violence? Yeah, no, yeah, exactly. Um, we, we, we saw this, what is it called? Um, the, <laughs> are we all thinking the same thing? That yeah. the film with the gangs? Oh, no. It's really funny. What's it called? 
I can't remember. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But I was thinking more of like there was this sort of dance where um I think is it Jamaican? Where like they basically like throw themselves on each other and like you know in splits and stuff like that and so like that's bring as want much pain as po- possible no i think that's that what you don't want to explore we were film. no no yeah <laughs> so we were like talking in class about how that is like a good representation of how we see in the distortion of intimacy mm-hmm. in the caribbean space so yeah i would just like to show the type of intimacy that expresses true genuine love Mm -hmm. because i think it's something that people are really uncomfortable with in the caribbean and my goal is hopefully we'll be less you know we're conservative in a weird way because we show a lot of kind of violence and stuff but then we don't want to show that level of intimacy so i know every film student when it's time for the thesis they want to film a sex scene they're like we got to film a sex scene no i didn't want we wanted to but then i realized i didn't it didn't fit the context i don't like it has to make sense for the plot of the story. You can't just randomly throw it in there because you want to be controversial. Exactly. I have a question too, like locally in terms of um, our professional landscape. Are there like dedicated intimacy co- coordinators or have we not gotten to that stage yet? I because really I think... I feel like we could do research on that because I'm really not sure. I think I'm in really order for sure. that to be like as ethical and as safe mm-hmm. as possible that that would be something that we'd mm-hmm. have to consider as well. Definitely. Too. So then mm-hmm. that would be something that we should explore more in the Caribbean, yeah. especially for film, intimacy coordinators. Yes. All right. So I don't know. You sh- she didn't really get an answer. You, you want to yes. answer a little bit more so about the question? In terms of what I would like to explore in the future as a Caribbean filmmaker, I think that I would like to um, work on uh, projects that, address um like neurodivergence mm. and also like the stigmas that we have here locally pertaining to mental illness and like mental health awareness you know despite it being so prevalent and uh, also like Ali said i would also like to um to create representations where we see you know genuine love genuine affection um genuine kil- kinship whether between you know blood relatives or, or found family um so yeah so i would like to see like um one of the problems that with a, a lot of um film industries right now is that a lot of uh, like audience well not necessarily audiences i would say i think like a lot of productions are so jaded like it is like even in the dialogue and everything is yeah. like there's a hesitance to to display like sincerity and genuine emotion is always mm-hmm. some some exactly. some irony some wisecrack you know some haha you know just kidding kind of thing so genuine love genuine emotions yeah. i feel that's know. kind of because people still view film as like escapist so they don't want to get mm-hmm. too real because then people go oh gosh i hated how they made me feel this bad yeah, yeah. Which i actually don't mind i love <laughs> i love realistic films yeah. yeah. Like, it doesn't always have to have a happy ending. Yeah, but, like, even in Hollywood where, um, like, you know, obviously they have those, like, over-sexualized things, but they have, you know, kissing where it still has to be in this very sexualized mm-hmm. manner. Like, um, I don't know. I think that's, I think genuine love and, like, attention is something that I really yeah. want to go into. Care, yeah. yeah, care, yeah. genuine care. Mm-hmm. Um, and then also like, uh, you know, showing of like fam, like healthy family yeah. dynamics oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and all so those things that we don't see. Like a vision of what we could be. Oh, your yeah. mic, your mic. Yeah. <laughs> like a vision of what, what we, we could, could be. be. Like, mm-hmm. like yes, a lot of us we see dysfunction, you know, model in our homes and stuff. Yeah. We have these negative experiences in our neighborhoods and whatnot. And thing. But like, here's what we could be if we work through. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and maybe even show the process of working through those things no, yeah. on screen. Yeah. So then I would say that what we, I guess all three of us, kind of want to see more in Caribbean from what we want to actively do is have more of like an intimacy coordinator. Doesn't ha- intimacy, does, intimacy doesn't just have to be like sex scenes and kissing scenes. Mm-hmm. It's just the way in which you talk to each other. And actors should be able to, if they're playing friends, they need to feel that friendship exactly. and it has to translate on camera. So that's, bo- that's what we all want to kind of do more in film to grow the industry a bit more because yeah, yeah. it needs that type of realism. Yeah, and I think quickly, like, 
um, a lot of problems that we have like crime and like anger and Mm -hmm. stuff like that in the Caribbean comes from the fact that we have these broken families and and a lack of genuine love so I think that if we explored those things and you know inspired people to like pay more attention to those things a lot of things within society will you know (laughs) so we really need to work on our directors then everyone wants to be a director but they don't know how to properly direct the actors to translate those emotions I keep saying translate, but that's just, that's just how it makes sense in my brain. Mm. <laughs> Sorry. You want to no, say something? Let's, let's wrap this up. Final thoughts. So I think um, ultimately I just want to be a creator who inspires people to connect more mm-hmm. with other people, you know. Yeah. Mm. So then you don't really, f- so you all don't feel the need to like tackle serious topics so seriously, but you still would like to try them out i would like to but then also i believe that a comedy could be a vehicle mm-hmm. for those things as well too the it doesn't have to be legitimately like you know tonally be so serious you know exactly yeah. even if you're tackling serious topics it doesn't have to be exploitative mm-hmm. it doesn't have yeah. to make the audience feel uncomfortable you could you could you could um that's why sound is important i, I don't understand why we have a need for like violence against women scenes yeah. you don't have to show that the actors don't have to act that it could just be a moment that happened it could you could just show the aftermath there's so many other ways you could show those serious topics without directly showing like the intensity exactly. of that moment like, like yeah. what, what do they call it um pain porn or something like that yes what yes it I, can't, I, I, I know can't what you mean and that's a thing that I, yeah, cinema is just really obsessed with right now it's a serious problem i think it's just kind of sensationalizing mm-hmm. everything and making their pain like a like a um something to be stared at and like gawked at mm-hmm. whereas you know it should be something that we give reverence to mm-hmm. all right so as filmmakers that's kind of what we want to be we want to work on those feelings and emotions on exactly. camera and also yeah we want to tackle serious topics but we could do it in a not in a light hearted way it doesn't have to be funny but it just doesn't have to be so violent or exploitative of exploitative is yeah. the word yeah all right so that's kind of i don't want to end this on such a serious on such a serious and kind of sad way so final thoughts you want to say anything to the audience you know because this is about different perspectives of the film community and in the industry but specifically coming from the university of the west and these so anything you want to say i mean how about you say your experience so far after your eight weeks and and you and what you're, or at least what you're looking forward to. Any questions about what's to come? Okay, so I am looking forward to year two for um, the documentary course because I have a few ideas in terms of documentary that I'd like to explore. So uh, um, I know at the end of that course, that I'd have to do like a, a, a major, you know, produ- documentary production. Mm-hmm. So I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah. I feel like you'll enjoy my documentary. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I the, did definitely. The did. dyslexia one. Oh, actually, I made a documentary I haven't, about dyslexia. I actually haven't seen it, so I would have to. Well, I mean, because you said you wanted to do archives, something mental yeah. health, so that give you some ideas. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for letting <laughs> me know. I have to view, watch another one. Yeah. <laughs> no, same. I haven't seen your dyslexia, but I'm sure we're watching some weekend classes. We're literally watching all of them right now. I saw your pr- Pacing Journey one, loved that one, you know. Check it out on YouTube. Yeah. But, I mean, in terms of what I'm looking forward to, I'm looking forward to actually making the documentary. Right now, we're making, like, the mini ones. Um, so it's just kind of a lot of learning curves mm-hmm. because, you know, problems with audio, problems with context, whatever, whatever. But I'm glad to be learning. And then I'm also very much looking forward to like Capstone and the opportunity to make one of those, you know, <laughs> big old films. Capstone um, is scary. It's, it's, it's a lot it's of work scary. and it's very daunting. It is scary. But at the end of the day, this is what I came here to mm-hmm. do. And I like, I have that dedication. So, you know, I'm going to try my best. But just know? trust your classmates. Yeah. And even if it's kind of bad to think negatively of the people around you, but if you could find like a core group of people that you know will be responsible, yeah. just make sure like they're the ones to take on the brunt of the work. Because people, yes, they're in university, but people have other lives outside university. So you kind of yeah. have to be sensitive to that. Because we have people who are employed. They had jobs to go to, so they couldn't always be there. And you can't really get upset with them. Because yeah. I mean, 
they're already in the industry. They're just doing this degree to kind of back up what they have to do. So it's just kind of understanding everybody exactly. being sensitive because, I mean, yeah. it's a class setting. You didn't really choose to work together and you just kind of have to. But yeah. you'll, have, you'll have fun moments. You'll have sad moments too, but... And that's all part of it, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, and um, thank you for that advice, <laughs> actually, because, yeah, I mean, we're going into that next year, and I just, no fighting for Capstone. I just want us to have a good result and, um, yeah, work together. And, you know, we, we all, in a, a my class, we all have, like, different sensibilities and, like, different, mm -hmm. you know, stories that we want to tell, all very, very different. But I'm hoping that we can collab and Probably. sometimes you kind of have to just let someone take the wheel because if it's too many, I mean, the saying, too many cooks in the kitchen, you don't want to overly, con is it convoluted? Is that the word you don't want? Yeah. Sometimes saying too much is, is really too much. Yeah. I don't know if that makes sense. Anyway, yeah. so that was where our final thoughts. And that means it's the end of the podcast. The I the podcast. made it go back sad. I was like, Capstone so rough. I know. I, I did want to hear more about Capstone. No, I mean, y'all are lucky y'all don't have to do Capstone during COVID. So that's the end of our podcast today, <laughs> people. <laughs> it's a film thing. I was your host, Rebecca Gillen. Have a lovely evening. Say bye. 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 <laughs>